G'day, friends. <laughs> That's what you wanted. <laughs> that was so choreographed. I said just wave. G'day, friends. Welcome to today's YouTube video. <laughs> Steve's with me here. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to teach Steve how to sketch out a fashion mannequin today. So, a fashion I mannequin? Did you see that movie in the 80s? No. That's called Mannequin. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, I have seen it. Seen Yo, it. I have seen it. Yes, I have seen it. Not a long time though, so I don't really remember it. Um, today, so we've been doing a lot of Instagram lives lately. Yeah. Thank you to everyone that's been uh, p participating. Vol popping I was going to say volunteering, but yeah, popping up. Um, we've had a really great time, and we thought since we've been doing a lot of fashion this past week, sure. Um, that I would teach Steve how to learn how. Wow, English. <laughs> I would teach Steve how to draw a fashion mannequin so that anyone that wanted to play along with this while we were doing the fashion would at least have something to sketch on top of. Now, I can't take you through the whole process of, you know, how to draw each individual eyelash, but I think the base, like having a, a fashion mannequin is yeah. pretty good, right? Yeah. What am I trying to think of? The bodice. What's it called? I've literally the body forgotten form? the word. Yeah, the form. Like a dress form? The dress form. That's what I'm trying to think of. I was going to say <laughs> dummy. I don't know. I've lost it today. Anyway, so we're going to take you through that step by step. And I think that I think Steve's going to put some fashion on his. I am? Yes. Okay. I think we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll All see right. where we end up. Okay. We've got a red blue pencil here. Follow along if you want to. Um, we're going to start with a line that goes all the way down the middle of our page. We're going to draw this pretty big. You don't have to draw it this big, but I just want to get... Is it better to draw it in red or in black, or blue? I like to draw it in red so that I can see... <laughs> The red lines are my working lines, and then when I'm ready to line what I want to keep, I'll do it in blue. Okay. Typically, if you're working in graphite and ink, this would be your lead pencil, and then when you're ready to ink it all up, you would erase all of the lead pencil. Okay. But when you're learning, I think it's good to uh, keep a lot of the working and construction lines, because you might forget that you actually had some help along the way sure. when you go back to reference it. I'm good with that. Please don't feel stressed to use a ruler with any of this. Oh. It's just sketching. That would have been nice. <laughs> it's too late. No, you don't need a ruler. <laughs> we just want a straight line vertical up and down. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot out a little shoulder line here. So I'm going to put a straight, almost straight. I'm going to curve it slightly. I'm not going to make mine as big as yours. Okay. Just where, like a shoulder line, like right there? Yep. Just, that's how wide your shoulders are going to be. I always think of the shoulders kind of first, because then I make the hips and the waist relative okay. to the shoulders. Um, and with a female dress form, usually the shoulders are quite narrow. And then the waist is a little pinched in, so I'm going to give this another little cross-section, little curve across the center. Okay. And then I'm going to go down a little bit more and give it a much bigger one. This is the, um, this is the hips. So if you want your hips to be hourglass, you can have them just as wide as the shoulders. I actually like them a touch bigger than the shoulders. I like to have my shoulders cinch into a little waist and then go out to some wide hips. Okay. Very curvy. It's okay if you've done this too wide and you, you know, when we start to block it all in, you'll I feel like I've done it too big. I feel like it should have been there. Yeah, that's fine. When we go to do it, you can start moving your construction lines around. Because these are just to help us guide through this process. Can I shrink it? Uh, you can. But we can do that with our, our next step. Okay. Um, and we're going to put the last one on, which is just where it's going to finish. I'm going to put a little cross section down the bottom as well. The reason we want them slightly curved is that this dress form is three-dimensional, so uh, we wouldn't really have a flat curve like this. Anything that was a straight line would kind of round across that cylindrical shape. Okay. So we're just giving them soft curves for an outlet. Remember, these are all working lines. They don't have to be perfect. Let's go right back up to the top. Okay. I'm going to put two oval shapes. These are my arms. I'm not going to draw the arms, but these are my technically my shoulders where the arms would pop off. Okay. I'm just going to attach them to the side. Great. Now from the bottom of that circle, that little flat oval. Connect to this. Yep, connect to the side of this line here. Can you see the top torso part started popping out? Mm-hmm. Okay. They can be very angular right now, so we can just join them straight up. I'm going to join these from the side of this waist joint. Straight? Yep, just straight. This is just my form. I can go back over in blue and start to curve everything out when I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to join the side of the hip down to the bottom. And technically this would be where our legs are. And since we've got this nice center point, you can actually see where the legs are split into two. That's perfect. Okay. Did much better than I thought, Steve. <laughs> are you stressed yet? I'm totally stressed. <laughs> there you go. On the top, let's do a little flat oval just above our shoulder line 
and this is going to be our neck. So I'm just going to add from the side, I'm going to kind of make it, what's that shape called? A trapezium? Trapezoid. I guess it's called that here. <laughs> I think I learned it's a trapezium. Um, it almost looks like that. We're just angling those lines it's out like of touch. A dot. And then I'm going to swoop those over to my shoulder. Because I want the shoulders to be sloped down a touch. If they're straight out and flat, it kind of looks like you're shrugging your shoulders a little bit. So we just want a nice little rounded shoulder down there. Okay. That's great. Let's come down through the torso again and add some of our detail lines. Just underneath the armhole, I'm going to add just a slight curve again. Because this is where I'm going to place my bust. And the reason I want to put this here is if I'm drawing fashion, especially on female figures, I kind of want to know where the bust line is, so I know how much to reveal or to cover up. So on that line, halfway through, from the center point to the edge, I can mark a little halfway point. Okay. And then around that, I'm going to draw two oval shapes that meet in the center, and that's going to be our bust line. This will help us to know things like if I have a halter top that I need to put the straps out It's very wide oval, does it matter? That's fine, these are all just working lines for now, and in fact when you put the fashion on you won't even see those. Okay. So um, also to know like well if you want your straps to be straight over the center of the bust you would put them over this center point. Got it. So we just need that little marking, might just darken up my my little reference, and I'm gonna actually just connect that center point to the top of my ovals, slightly angling like brackets, like you would write in a sentence. Okay. That's gonna show that this is a circular form. Now from the bottom of that center point, we have, I'm gonna say this is all, this is the center line, right? And then we've got the edge of our shape. Yeah. So we need to go along these lines and find the center point between this center and the edge. Which is this little dot right here. I'm going to do it down the bottom again, so I'm going to put from this center line out to the edge of the hip, I want to put a little dot right in the center, okay. and now I'm going to start connecting these up. So from the middle of that bust, down to the middle of that part of the waist, so that we kind of sectored it off like a pizza, mm -hmm. and then from the middle of that part, down to the middle of this part of the waist. This is going to start to bring in that dimension, so that when you're drawing clothes, you'll have the right uh, form. Okay. So you'll know if you were going to do pinstripes, they would actually follow these curves. Rather than having straight up and down pinstripes, you would know that this is the curve you would need to follow, this is the curve you would need to follow, this angle down here, and this is how you really start to sculpt in that shape. Got it. Now you can do it down to the bottom of this part here, but technically these are just their own legs and it doesn't really need it. I think it helps mostly to have it right here. Okay. I like to just connect the side of the neck to the other side of the neck, just where that shoulder starts to slope off. Okay. And then out the top, I'm going to draw a little stick and just a little teardrop, an upside down teardrop shape up the top. Kind of like a, um, it's a yeah. placeholder for the head. <laughs> okay. And then right down the bottom, I'm just going to darken in that line, because this will actually be the stand that the dress sits on. So depending on how big you've done it, I would probably want mine to be a lot longer, but for all intents and purposes, I'm just gonna have to stop there. And I'm gonna draw a flattened out pancake at the bottom. Just a flat oval connecting that there. You could even slope a bit up to that line. Put a bit of a curved pyramid down to that make it look like a real stand. If you're really into that fancy ornate, you know that Victorian, was the iron work? Mm -hmm, I'm adding. Wrought iron. Well, Steve's decided we need that, so we can connect the bottom there. Here's where you want to make your adjustments if you don't really love them, because the next thing we're going to do is add our blue in. If you thought your hips were too wide, just take this as your opportunity to sculpt them back in. Now your center point might change again, so if I put my hips in closer, you might want to start re-sculpting, I guess, before we do all the center point work, because then you're going to have to adjust them over just to make sure you've found that new center. This is why we do it in red, so that we're not super confused by the end once we go it over in blue. I'm also going to bring up the bottom of this, because I don't want it to be a super long bottom. Never long bottom. I just want it to be nice and short. 
you have graphite, you can erase as you go. Sorry if my hair's in the way. And you can also round off any corners you want. So if you've got a really angular waist shape here, you can start to softly round that in and make it look a little more smooth. It depends. Sometimes I actually really like that angular look. If I'm using a pen straight away, I think it looks quite nice. So I'm just strengthening some of my curves and reshaping and kind of sculpting out my image before I commit to anything. That's great. So I think Steve and I both decided that we needed smaller dress forms. <laughs> so now you're gonna see why the blue is handy because we're going to re-outline everything we like in blue. We'll kind of speed you through this section because you don't really need to see it all happen again. But the point is to just take the lines that you like and commit to them in blue. Try not to double work or double handle these lines. Just get one and done and uh, you can take your time doing this bit. So we'll speed it up and we'll see you in a second. All good? I think so. Yeah, everything's on there. That looks great. So you've completely re-sculpted out of that framework. Do you feel confident with that? Yeah, I think I would need to go in darker. Okay, but just learning as a sketch? Yeah, yeah, that's feels, good. Okay, sure. Because <laughs> we can try this again. Now that we know how to do it, I don't think you ever really find your perfect one the first time you ever learn how to do it. So congratulations Thanks. for learning how to do it. Um, and then we can try it again. I think next time we'll do it with a graphite and then we'll ink it with a waterproof pen and okay. then we'll get to sketching some fashion on, over the top. Okay. So let's find a new page, we'll set you up with a really nice base, and then we'll do some fashion on Are top. you gonna do it or am I gonna do it? You're gonna do it. Okay. Or you want me to draw this? Hmm. But you did such a good job. We'll both do another version and you can choose which one to paint on. Okay. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna grab a lead pencil. You don't want something super dark for this, so I actually use quite cheap lead pencils sometimes. Um, this is a Ticonderoga black We're pencil. going over this. This is just a regular... We're doing it on top of this. Number two. No, we're going to pick a new page. And we're going to sketch it out again. We can be a little neater this time. You kind of know that last time we went... We both went a little too long and too wide. Okay. But this time it's, we're going to erase this. So we can do as many working lines okay. as we want. Okay, cool. So let's just sketch it out again in pencil. And then we'll ink it up with a waterproof pen. Okay. We're going to use a ruler for this bit. Because Steve really wants something nice and straight. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to get erased anyway, so let's just work straight down the middle of the page. There we go. We're going very, very lightly. I'm going to start with my shoulders. A nice loose curve. I'm going to do my waist. This really small, nipped-in waist. Get my curves. I'm going to get some wide hips. And then I'm not going to go so far down this time. I'm just going to end about there. <laughs> and then from the shoulders, I'm going to do my oval shapes. Oop. I'm going to connect them down to my waist. I'm going to connect that out to my hips. And I'm going to connect that down to my kind of leg area. If you were getting super technical with this, you absolutely could take a ruler and make sure that, okay, so this part of my hip has gone out two and a half centimeters, this part has I mean, to go out two totally and a half crooked. centimeters. <laughs> My girl's crooked. I tend to, yeah, I mean, I tend to eye making sure that it's an equal distance from the center line, but this is why we've got a pencil, because if you find that you've gone too far, you can always just overcorrect. I mean, I'm way over. That's fine. Do you want to draw again, or do you want to erase some of it? But I like it. I like, think it looks... Okay. Well, Steve's getting some dynamic posing going on over there, so we'll leave him with that. It really is all personal preference. If you can manage to like whatever you're drawing, I say go with it. I'm just, I think that it's good. I'm just kind of afraid to have to redo it all over again. Uh, well, it's a pencil and we can erase it or we can get a new page. There's always more paper. There you go. I'm going to put my little topper on here. I know when I give you these tutorials, um, I have a certain order that I work in. I will just be honest, I change the order up all the time. Go under that armhole here, put my bust on. See, this time I just drew the circles before I even did the center point. But there's my center point there. We can add those curves in. We Mine are always a little... To um... the center. Sectioning off my little quadrants. Because I'm happy with this shape. I actually wouldn't change this shape this time. I am going to just soft soften up those curves, though. So you could change this whole thing. I mean, if you're stylistic choice was to, uh, you know, you wanted to draw that Cinderella gown. Mm -hmm. At this point, I mean, I would just take away that side altogether and nip that right in. Got it. 
and it's the same thing. Put your eraser. There you go. Thanks. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just saying you can do that. If you need to mark it as you go along, like you need to say shoulder line, bust line, waistline, hip line, leg line, um, call it whatever you're going to remember. There are specific terms for things, but once I've forgotten them, I don't try to relearn them. <laughs> I just give it whatever name I'm going to remember, and then I'll go with it. Obviously, that's not the most technical way to design fashion, but I'm not making any of these garments. They just live in my fantasies. This is kind of hard. Is it really? Yeah, it's a little bit more, um... You did that so easily, and you're gonna tell me that's hard. <laughs> you know how long this took me to learn? This took me a long time to figure out. I think you did amazing. Thanks. What's the hard part, though? I think it's because I'm, 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 I like, I compare too much. So I look at yours, and I'm like, it's not good enough. Would you want to swap? No, it's fine. I like, okay. I like mine. <laughs> I just have to remember that I'm like... This is the first time you've ever done it. And the fact that it looks almost exactly the same is shocking, probably more for me than you. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, how it took me so long to learn this. I didn't learn this in one day. Certainly not in 20 minutes. <laughs> Do you have a bit of an expectation? That yeah, always. Be, yeah. That can sometimes creep up and uh, spoil the fun a little bit. So, since we're working in pencil, there's no stress just yet. I know what I want to do. Yeah? I saw it today on Instagram. It's, like a, it? it's, a, it's obviously a classic Dior silhouette. I'm going to find it right now. Okay. While Steve finds that, I'll grab a waterproof pen. It's classic silhouette. But I liked the colors, and I thought it'd be fun to try to paint it. I'm actually going to go over mine really sketchy. I know I've kind of cleaned it all up, but I'm going to double sketch, kind of loose urban sketch style, over this whole thing and give it a really raw and organic it's look. What's this? Look. Oh, that's so pretty. Of course you've chosen something it. with a lot of folds and... <laughs> gathering and ruching and... I don't know if I just changed the focus, hold on. Okay, so Steve has chosen the world's most difficult gown to I attempt. Have I really? <laughs> Look, we're gonna just go loose, it doesn't matter. We can try whatever we can try. And it's just kind of a basic, like, there, there, there. The shape itself is basic. I think all the texturing and details is a little difficult. Well, you just kind of did it, 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 it. We can give our own interpretation. Yeah. Alright, so I'm, um... Here's the thing, if you actually wanted to draw fashion on this, you would draw it before you inked any of this up. Because whatever you put down in this... This is what's going to highlight. Well, you're going to see everything, because watercolour is transparent. So if I don't want to do that, you're doing this, are you going to do that on top of this? Yeah, so I'm going to do it on top, so it's actually going to be more of a see-through, like, the but gown. But I don't want to do it... Then you I should draw your gown on first. With, per with the pen. You can actually sketch it out with your pencil, and then when you're ready, you can go over it with the pen. Okay. So Steve's gonna sketch out his gown. And since you've got all your area, I just want to explain what your dress looks like or what you're choosing to do. I don't know what that- what shape is that? A-line? Well, it's just- it's just a straight across strapless. So straight across strapless. And so you've chosen to go above the bust. Above the bust, yes. It itself is on a dress form, so Steve's kind of got the perfect dress to draw right now. Because you're seeing what part of the dress form is covered up and what isn't. Right. All of it, except for that. Yeah. <laughs> but the dress... So do you think that dress emerges from the hips? Does it come out from the waist? Does it come out from the bust? Like, is it an empire waist? What's empire waist? Is under the bust. So where, where do you think that dress starts to become full? At the bottom, right here. So at when you're hips. looking at that... That's the hips. It's yeah. Waist, so, so you know that when you go to draw it, you you're going to start putting the fullness at the hips. Yeah. I like to call those things out oh, because okay. if I get confused along the way, hopefully me calling out those instructions to I myself kind of keeps me on the right track. Oh, I was like, I don't know. What are you asking me? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For most of the time, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't sit by myself and just call things out out loud, but I'll do it in my head. <laughs> Could you imagine I was just here all day, just speaking to myself? If you really want to give it some kind of um, fun look, start extending all these lines um, so that it looks like a... What's it called? Like a blueprint drawing? You could really get all technical on it and have fun with the scribbles. Okay, so you've got that. I'm going to draw straight in pen. Like Steve said, this Dior has a dress that goes over the bust. So I'm going to go over the top of that. It is... Uh, very cinched and corseted and structured, so I'm just going to follow the edge of that. And then it starts to get really full around the hips. And it has almost this, it's like an A-line, bit of a ball gown. 
So I could choose where I wanted it to stop. Usually I'll do this because it helps me get, sorry, it helps me find the edge a little easier, especially if I'm going straight in with pen. It's a, it was designed in 1954, so it definitely has that. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty. Um, it looks like it's made out of silk and there's a pattern all over it, like a floral pattern. So I'm just gonna draw the bottom of this. Can you see how my dress is see-through? Because you can actually see the dress form underneath it. Steve's we're going to erase and you won't actually see a bunch of that. I'm gonna put some of these lines in. And it's got all this gathering at the top, so... Oh, you've already started drawing that, yeah. I'm gonna just put a few lines that go this way. A little few loops, like J's, that go back and forth, that insinuate this is all ruched up here. You could even kind of um, texture the outside just a little bit with some little ruffling, just to make it look like that body, that bodice has been gathered. It's really pretty, this dress. It's like, it's it, nice. it seems pretty like, simple idea to um... Don't you get any ideas? Steve would be like, can we make this? <laughs> no, I'm even saying just to draw it. It is a very, it's a very simple shape, for sure. This would be a great one to start with. I feel like I need to... So don't try to put too much detail on, because I'm going to suggest that your next step is to erase the bodice that you can see underneath the dress. So if you start putting all this detail on, you're going to erase it again. I want to make it more full. Mm -hmm. And if you are watching at home, can you see how the bottom of my dress goes to the floor and covers the base and see how Steve's doesn't quite go to the bottom because this is going to represent where the bot where the ground is this will also determine the length so Steve's got a bit of an extended T length going on there which is fine too there's nothing wrong with that um, but just so you know just because there are no legs there doesn't mean you can't get a semblance of how long well, do you think the this goes is. all the way down to the ground I don't know I mean to me it does but it, you cannot to me it doesn't because if it was in the 50s but I guess if it's a ball gown, it could have... For that, I would see it was a it was a full floor length, but why don't you just give it a T-length? Yeah, I like it where it's at. Because you're actually going to erase all of this underneath. Mm. So it might be nice to still see some of your stand. Hmm. Okay. So grab your eraser and erase any of the mannequin that is underneath the garment. Okay. I like how my dress came out. So Steve's had to erase some of his detail that he put on before he erased the underneath, so he might just add that back in. Do you think you want to outline yours with pen? Um, I'm actually scared to outline it in pen, but um, do you think that'll look better? Well, we can try a couple of different things. I think we can try painting it over this, so this will be our fully see-through fantasy. And I think on yours, we could actually just paint it from the pencil. Is the pencil gonna mm, like like mesh and mix with it? I, you know what, I'm, I no, yield. It'll be fine. I yield to whatever you think is best. You are the teacher. Well, if you're too afraid to uh, ink it in, I won't make you ruin something that you enjoy. So I'll just get the watercolor ready. And whilst you're erasing the last part of that, I'm gonna put my first coat on. Da -da 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 -da. What color is that dress? It's like a silver metallic. It's definitely a color I don't have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is, it's like a, it is very silvery blue. I'm gonna use Kyanite Genuine. Yeah, that's good. And um, I'm going for loose interpretation, so I'm just gonna enjoy that. When I kiss the teacher. I'm gonna leave a lot of white space in mine because I like this really gestural, loose style of watercolor. Especially when everything's so scratchy and scribbly That's like this. That's so pretty, that you just did. Thanks. And I'm gonna let that dry for a second before I color in the, the dress form. There you go. That's great, Steve. I really like that. So, do you want to put your first part of color on? I'm not going to tell you how to color it in if you want to do the whole thing, if you want to just do swooshes, if you want to be precise or careful, but this is just your first layer, so try not to stress too much. I'm already stressed. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and don't make, like, you don't have to copy the dress either. You could just make your own fully new dress from this. No, I like this color. Do you want to put gingham on there? Nah. <laughs> You're pretty good at that on Instagram Live. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. So with watercolor, Steve's been learning this over the week, but more water, more pigment. Um, but for something like this, because I tried to shear out the color to make it lighter, uh, in this case, it would be more water. And if you're doing something that's kind of loose and gestural, my tip is to work with the shadows. Wherever you see the shadows is where I would apply the color. Just leave everything else kind of white. I don't know if I'm doing that well, but... It looks good to me. How do you feel? Confident. There you go. Are you enjoying it at least? Yeah. <laughs> Watch him try to frame this once it's done. 
He was very obsessed with those Birdie Bots, every flavoured beans lady. <laughs> those are my favourite ones that we've ever done. They were fun. Yeah. Mine's dried a little bit, so I'm going to colour in my dress form. I kind of think I'm going to use this uh, buff titanium, kind of a beige colour, because I want it to be pretty soft. And I'll just add a bit of that brown to the shadow areas. In fact, because mine is see-through, I could go kind of into the dress as well with that. You want to be careful when you're glazing watercolour over watercolour that's already there that you don't scrub into it too much, otherwise you'll start to reactivate that pigment. So as I'm putting on this layer, I'm just laying it on top. I'm not trying to scrub too much. I'm trying to pull from this so I will lighten those shadows, but also pull it up into here. Yeah, just make sure you're using a lot of water when you do that. Oh, yours is really pretty, Steve. Yeah, thanks. This is really great, actually, because we're looking at two different people do exactly the same thing. You're really starting to see, even though Steve doesn't really do art journaling or anything, like, you don't really paint or draw in your free time ever, do you? Never. Not that I know of. Um, no, I mean, maybe when I was a kid, but I haven't. Well, I, th well, I think what's interesting is you're starting to see that there is a stylistic choice that Steve makes that is different to mine. And that's natural. Is People's it... natural instincts are to go with what they see is beautiful or what they see is interesting. But and is it good? No, I just think it, it says more about you. You are this way. You are very clean and neat and structured and refined. And so it's not surprising to me that that's how you'd want to approach this as well. And very careful. Thanks. I'm quite wild and loose. <laughs> it's literally no surprise that mine's a mess. No, I mean, I think there's yours is really beautiful too. But I'm just saying, I think it really highlights in this certain instance how there, there's a natural like desire for you to do something a certain way. Mm. And that when you keep elaborating on that and going over and over and over again, the style starts to develop. Got it. Yeah. Because, you know, I didn't start like this, but over time, this is where I ended up. But you're so good. And I might change this tomorrow. In fact, I might look at yours and think yours looks so pretty, I'll try it that way. Hmm. Just rips up the whole book. <laughs> Influence. Stop the video, start again. Try not to go too far on that first layer though, because you're going to put patterns all over the rest. You want to let that air dry for a touch. She's got this floral pattern. I'm actually not going to bother looking at it, because I want to do something a little bit more open for suggestion. First, I'm going to put some of that ruching in by adding a dark it. blue to all those shadow areas. What's that, Steve? I should have erased my little thing right here, but it's okay. I don't see anything that needs to be erased over there. It looks good. Thanks. So I'm going to add kind of these big blue spots over the dress. Spots. Beginning to see spots. And I'm just going to add a floral pattern. It's not the one that she's got on her dress, but this is where it starts. You start to take artistic liberties. If I were the person that liked to do uh, watercolor florals, I would use this as my opportunity to have fun all over the dress. But I'm not a huge watercolor floral person. I like them when they're a bit gestural. Or oh, I'd love to see a big skirt like this covered in Ali Brown's abstract florals. Those are super pretty. So I'm not talking. It's fine. You're concentrating. I'm concentrating. As long as you're having fun. I am. <laughs> I am going to put a few uh, leaves all throughout this because I'm a big leaf person. We don't have a thing to hear. In fact, some of my leaves I think are even going to go off the side of the dress. That's going to imply that some of these are three-dimensional. See, I couldn't stick to it, could I? I couldn't just do what I was asked. <laughs> Steve's like, that is not the dress that we saw. That's fine. <laughs> it's cool. I can't help myself. Steve's a bit of a purist in life, so I'm curious to see how he's going to stick to the pattern. I'm not going to do the pattern. What are you going to do? Nothing. Oh, you just like it like that? <laughs> it works, Cinderella. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Draw Lily James's face on there. Well, I like the pattern. I think it's pretty. I might add some, like, little details. It's a very delicate pattern, and I think, especially because you've got the ruching up the top here, like all this gathering, I, I couldn't even pretend to care enough to go and put Can you flowers have a, do in you have there. A, 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 sm a thinner brush? A smaller brush? Yep. Where? I have this one right here. Oh, that's pretty. It's pretty small. What other color might look? This is one of these, right? But that won't really show, will it? I'm just going to get even more wild with ha -ha. I know. <laughs> so mad, I'm going to ruin your piece. I won't do too many. Was this, will this be nice or no? Let's watch it on the side of my page. Hmm. Maybe just a touch of that. Okay. Maybe not too much. So Steve's going into Prism by Hydrocolor. He's mixing it with some blue. He's going to swatch out on my side of the page so he knows that he likes it. 
And then he's going to do his pattern with a little brush, which I'm assuming he's going to take some time with, so we'll just speed through that part and we'll chat to you once he's finished. Alright, so we're going <clears> to <throat> stop here for a second. Steve's having a crisis. At the <laughs> <moment>. <laughs> he's done an amazing job and we're just chatting about how well he's done and now he's too scared to move forward because he thinks that he does want something a bit more dramatic about the shadows or he yeah. just wants something a bit bolder. He's afraid to go and ruin it. So my, my advice at this point is if you can do it once, you can do it again. So go for everything. But I know Steve and I know it's going to really upset him if he... If he, messes, does, it if he messes it up in his mind. So I'm going to say, why don't you practice what you want to do over there, do it on this, and see if you can achieve what you're seeing over there. Okay. So if you want to put shadows on, I'd maybe do it with a bigger brush. Maybe even this one. This is halfway between there. He thinks he just wants to add a few shadows to the top. And I understand where he's coming from. Um, and we were just chatting about how in photography you have highlights, shadows, and midtones to a photo and when this starts to look like there's too much shadow in one area that's not intentional um, it can seem unbalanced the same thing kind of happens with the tonal value of an image I mean that didn't I don't hate what I just did though yeah totally and if you do it that way where it's just down one side that means the light is hitting it from this angle right so you can go over that side and do that and I would only recommend doing this if you want to pop the dimension just a little bit more strong I don't think it's necessary to do it when you're having fun and sketching, but for people that want to play with, you know, the 3D-ness of your illustrations, shadows are important for that. Did you change your brush? Yeah, I went back to my little thin one. Okay. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that. I'm not laughing at Steve, but I just, I know what his head was thinking. I'll have more control with this little brush. <laughs> exactly. Do you think your background in photography gives you an understanding of some of this stuff? Because you've seen a lot of this happen in, in front of your camera. And you specifically look for things like light and shadow and color when you're editing. Um, if it does, I'm sure it has, to be honest, but I, I also don't think that I've paid too much attention to it. I just think this is where it's like you just kind of wing it, right? It's like, do I like that? Does mm. it look good? You know? So you feel like you know the theory, but applying it is completely different. Yeah. Yeah, true. Because a lot of what I do know, I don't actually apply because it annoys me. Yeah, like, I think even, like, as a theorist, like, when, sorry, when it comes to, like, theory, some stuff I don't, it, it kind of stresses me out. Is that weird to say? Uh, yeah, like, the technical aspects of the camera and stuff. Yeah. If you, I, I'm on a need-to-know basis, to be completely honest right. with you. If I don't need to know that bit of info, I probably won't. But I do think that there's obviously a place for it, and some people really... There's certain things in my life that I, like, I'm super obsessed with when it comes to theory, like... And certain history of, of like music theater or mm. other things I really am like, oh, and I kind of have my own nerd out moment with it. But something like, like photography, it just, I feel like it just kind of happened. Well, I think intention and like purpose is different as well. I mean, I, I sit down, I want to do this for fun. Mm. So if, if something, if the theory is getting in the way of the fun, like if, if the theory is don't ever use white watercolor and I really want to use it. You're going to do it. I'm absolutely going to do it. Absolutely going to do it. Especially if you tell me I can't. But there are certain things, like if someone said, you know, hey, can you produce this, uh, you know, we'll pay you a hundred bucks to make this thing, I think then you can't really fake certain things. Right. Unless you're faking it so well, they'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... But it's like, you can't really fake the knowledge of Photoshop to know which file, you can't just choose any file extension. No. You... There are some things you have to Right, know. there are some technical elements to all of it, for sure. Even still, I make up half of it. I just wait for someone to say that's the wrong one. Can you give it to us in a PDF? And, and you're like, like oh, okay. okay. Google, what is a, a PDF? PDF. <laughs> Truly, <laughs> Google's my best friend. I don't know, maybe now I'm like going overboard, but... Yeah, if it's the one thing I would never guess is that I'd have to actually stop you from painting. <laughs> I never thought that would ever happen. It's right, we're not on a time crunch. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. Yeah, thanks for letting me play We along. did just want to show you how to create the dress form in case you wanted to play along with us on our fashion lives, but... Steve was talking about this dress earlier and I thought it'd be really fun to paint it. And now I'm actually really glad because I think our style's completely different. It's fun. And I've learned something about you here in this that I think, you know, now I could help you better. When Which we do is? Instagram lives. Oh. <laughs> Give you tons of time, <laughs> tiny paintbrushes, <laughs> yeah. a lot of grace and stress 
free environments. I mean, I think I do try to do that anyway. Yeah. You're a good teacher. You're a very good teacher. But you shock me because for someone that has never done this, you pick it up so quickly. So that's why I think there's a bit of raw talent in here. Thanks. I see you do well and I just think, oh, he can do anything. Right? You can do anything, right? I think we need Cerulean jacket. <laughs> I think we need a jacket here. How did I just misquote that? Yeah. So embarrassing. Delete this whole I'm YouTube taking, channel. I'm taking your card now. <laughs> it's gone. I have really been replaced now. Oh, dang it. So Steve has learned that you can erase with watercolor. Probably the biggest mistake I should never have taught him. <laughs> um, no, it is really good. And what you're doing just there, I've totally done that before. I like to think of it as carving the side of an image. Like you grab your water, a clean brush with the, the bristles are all wet, and you kind of scrub the watercolor back into place. Now, it won't work with everything. Because some watercolors are really staining, and if you've ever heard that word, it means so that pretty. it doesn't lift very well. It'll stain the page. So blues are pretty staining, but this is a mineral watercolor, so it's not the worst. See how that was dry, and I just kind of scrubbed yeah. it around. It's still going to be blue. That's where it's stained. Some of them, though, you can put down and completely lift off again. I think this blue you can kind of completely lift off again. I'm going to have to get you to swatch out that palette one day so you know where all the colors are. Yeah, probably, right? It's actually easier for me to control the paintbrush if it's like if I hold it like a pencil. I do that too. That's why I think I, I struggle with makeup because you have to do it like that. Right. And I want to do it like that. Dexterity is a factor in the skill of illustrating and painting, you know, paper crafting. I was just thinking it's so funny because I would look to children to be inspired, but technically, I mean, they've got the least chance of getting it right because their fine motor skills aren't developed yet. So they, they would struggle harder than we would to do it, but why are they so good at it? Oh, because they don't, because they're fearless. Yeah, the fear factor is just zero. If you ask a room of kids if they can do something, oh, everyone so will say yes. I did such a good job. Are you right there? <laughs> Steve's just gassing himself so hard. Well, I'm patting myself on the back because I'm always like really down, get really hard on myself. It is really good. I would, you should send that to your mom, tell her that you did that. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, que bonito, que lindo, <laughs> que lindo. I'm good with that. I think it looks really good. Thanks. Well done, Steve. Thank you. So, um, no, that's I... the end of our tutorial today. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Um, I'm going to just let Steve wrap you up here with his final thoughts. Um, thank you again, Steve, for doing this. Sure, thank you for really having me. I think it. the thing is, it's like it's such a sense of accomplishment because it always turns out, I think... I had a certain idea of what it was going to be and then it evolved and I'm like super happy with um, the end result and I actually feel like I have a stronger belief in myself than I did before. So, so watch out Instagram live. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm going to go get to editing this video and pop it up on YouTube. Until next time. Bye. See you later.